Let's see how many colours we can make from just three tubes of gouache paint plus white. So that's my challenge today. I'm just going to play with paint. I'm not going to make anything. I'm just swatching and mixing and playing. And that's the fun, isn't it? I'm also going to have a look at different ways you can document your colour swatching and colour mixing in your sketchbook or on paper and see what my final tally is right at the end. So if that sounds like fun, come along. Let's do some colour mixing. So today it's all about colour. I'm going to be playing with some gouache. and I'm going to be playing with just three tubes of gouache and white. And let's see how many colours I can make from just those three tubes. So that's my challenge to see how many I can make and um, stick to the end to see what my final tally is. And who knows? If you have a go, see if you can beat it. See if you can beat how many colours I make. So I'm just going to put some red out. So I'm using a, I've got a china palette here, the blue at this end. So I'm just literally going to put a dollop of each out. This is get, probably getting a little bit dry, this one. And this is my new one, which I haven't tried yet. Oopsie. So that's come out a bit runny. You can't really shake a tube, but anyway, and that's it. So I've got yellow, red and blue. So primary colours. I've also got a paper palette here, which I can do my mixing on. And I've got a big tub of water. I thought I would kind of work in, in squares or, or rectangle shapes. So I'm just going to see what I can create. So I'm going to work from the middle out and just make a shape with one colour and alter it slightly for the next shape. The first three shapes are going to be neat um, straight from the tube colours. So that's my red. So I'm not going to be worrying about how making things precise. I'm not a neat painter at all. So it might look a little bit Mondrian to start off with because I'm using the red, yellow and blue. But that's fine. I haven't got any black with it. It's yellow. So I, I wouldn't personally, I would rarely use, choose to go for a primary colour. They're all a bit too garish for me. So um, yeah, I would have, I personally would be avoiding the primaries and thinking, oh, I need to get a new tube of paint. But actually, I'm hoping we're going to find we can get a whole load more shades out of this than what we originally thought. So to do um, blue slightly bigger so what this is going to turn out to be I don't know but I figured if I did it on a piece of cartridge paper I could easily attach it into my studio journal um, alongside or near to the page where, that I have done before. I might just do that a little bit bigger. Just to go out there a bit more. So why would you want to just sit and play and mix colours? Well, not only is it a good exercise, it's an experiment, it's colour theory, it's play, and you know I love a bit of play. And it's amazing how few paints we actually need. As beginner painters, we can all get a bit bogged down with people, especially on social media, who have wonderful art halls and lots of materials, 
And it's easy to think that we have to have all of those materials too. But have a play with what you've got. And it's amazing to find out exactly what you can do with what you've got, with just the basic set of paints. And it can give you inspiration for future projects. Keep your swatches for reference to flick through. And you'll have some sort of record of how you made that colour. And if you know what three primaries they came from, then you're halfway there. Set yourself a challenge and sit down with the kids or the grandchildren on a rainy afternoon. Put three paints out on paper plates and see who can make the most colours. Fill the pages with many different shades. So colour swatching can be about reminding yourself what you have got and what you can do with it. And to remind yourself just how many colours you can make with three primaries plus black and white. This is the page that I used for the acrylic mixing. So I've got a crimson, I've got a phthalo blue and a cadmium yellow. And it's made, you could go on and on and on with the different shades and tones and tints. I did use white as well, no black but white. And, and it's just amazing how many different colours you can actually make from just these three primaries. But look what lovely shades we can make with, with, um, with those colours. Those are the acrylic colours. So I used cadmium yellow, phthalo blue, crimson, and white, titanium white. So that's what I've used for that page there. So this is this is the colour mixing page for the gouache. So these are my primaries here. As you can see, some of these colours, the blotchy ones are the ones that don't have any white in basically, and the ones that have had white mixed in them, they give a much more opaque coverage. So yeah, there again, you can go on and on and on. Each one of these is very slightly different. Even though you think they're fairly similar, that one's slightly lighter than that one. Yeah, it is incredible what you can do. So, so this, was, this was quite a fun exercise. I, I didn't want to do just the, the random dot splodge page that I've, I've done here. I've, it is, you can get carried away. So, you know, the, that's one of my other pages that I've done colour mixing. Yeah, um, this was a colour mixing one. So I didn't want to do just this splodge of colours. Nothing wrong with that, but I just kind of wanted to do something a little bit different. So that's given me my, my page of all the different colours that I can make using just three. Because quite often you, you get a set of, or you buy, buy your paints, especially in the early days, you buy them in a set. But if you actually sit down and take time to just have a play and, and mix your different shades and tints, you get, you get a huge rainbow of, of different colours. So I've done colour mixing before in the past. These, if you, you know, if you want to do something a little bit more structured or organised, you could have a go at making some mandalas. Now, this is not my idea. This is, this is an exercise that I did a few years ago from Lou Davis's uh, YouTube channel, and I'll put her link in the details below. But um, yeah, just doing simple mandalas. So just form, you know, pencil in, several circles of different sizes and then go around and, and make your patterns in the different colours. And this exercise is just using two watercolours. These are all watercolours on watercolour paper. And it's just using two colours. So I've got burnt sienna and ultramarine on here. And, and this is just, you know, the shades and, and tones and, and, and colours that you can make using those two, two colours. Uh, again, same, same. This one is ultramarine and yellow ochre. And it's just mixing the two together. So it's incredible what you can actually do. This is crimson and cadmium yellow. Phthalo blue and crimson. Lemon yellow and sap green. And uh, these literally are just the watercolours that are in the palette. Cadmium red and burnt umber and phthalo blue and viridian green. So 
it, so that's just using two. Just think how many more shades you'd get if you used three on this sort of thing. So yeah, if you wanted to make you know a bit more of a pattern, a bit more of a detail, a bit more of a fun page in your in your sketchbook, then you could use something like a mandala or doing something a bit more structured, a bit more formal. So that's one idea, two ideas, three ideas. And the other one that I have done is using big A2 sheets of paper. And this is with acrylic paints. And I've got it just literally, this is a piece of elastic. So these are big sheets. I definitely will need to move my tray out the way now. These are A2 sheets which I have colour mixed two colours and black and white and literally just put a splodge on the page of each colour and shade um, and with a brush just mixed and randomly um, covered the page with, with brush marks and let it mix where it's mixed and where it hasn't, you know, it hasn't. So this is Prussian blue, Naples yellow, black and white. Um, I'm going to take the pages out so you can see them a bit clearer. In fact, let's take that elastic off completely. It's just literally a loop of elastic. Uh, Naples yellow, cobalt blue, black and white. And, and it's just a good abstract play of colour mixing. Lemon yellow, Windsor blue, black and white. And, and it just by doing it like this, you can see how these how these paints work on top of one another, how they blend together, you know, so you've got a different, different brush marks, different effects, and um, the kind of greens that you can make with it. Cadmium yellow and cobalt blue, black and white. Cadmium red, ultramarine, black and white. So these, these are really fun to do. That's just my list of what I've got in, in the book. Um, Cadmium red and deep yellow. So I had at that stage I had a, a medium yellow, I think, and a, and a deep yellow. Um, and um, yeah, so these these are, are just fun play pages. So let's do the reverse side. So I've got cadmium red, lemon yellow. Turning them over. Ultramarine, cadmium yellow deep. Cadmium yellow, medium, phthalo blue, black and white. Windsor blue, permanent rose, black and white. Naples yellow, cadmium red, black and white. And Prussian blue, cadmium yellow, deep, black and white. So as you can see, also I've got this this um, folded book. So this is rose and yellow, black and white, the permanent rose. And I've just folded one of the concertina. And I thought, well, did I want to keep it as a concert, as a as a book? And decided that no, perhaps it was. You know, I did prefer prefer it in its larger format. So this is the only one I've done like this. Um, but similar thing, same size piece of paper, splodging down, making your marks. But say this one I have um, made into, folded into a book. I haven't painted on the other side. Cadmium yellow and permanent rose. And it just concertinas into a book. So those are my colour mixing pages. So there, there is, you know, it's useful to have some sort of idea as to, you know, what you can mix with with what and it's amazing you know what few paints we actually need so why don't you have a challenge set yourself a challenge and just have a play with with the paints that you've got see how many you can make i haven't counted these ones actually i must do that i might do that in a bit um it's an experiment it's color theory it's it's looking at what what colors go next to each other if you did really want to have a play with that, I have got another idea. So in one of my many boxes, I'm building up a, a bank of swatches. So these, these are all banded together. I don't know whether I will keep them banded together. But these are colour swatches that I've 
painted on, I think they probably were on A2 sheets, and then I've cut them out. And so I've got cobalt blue and white. These are all cobalt blues, um, mixed with a different amount of white. So it just means that you can, a bit like your paint swatches when you go to the hardware store, you can kind of do this and think, oh, do I like that one next to that? Do I like, you know, and you can play around with your different swatches, uh, you know, physically in, in your hand. Another another idea for, for play and, and to see what colours you can, you know, how many, how many variations of the colour that you can make. So um, that could be another thing to do. It is time consuming doing this, um, hence I haven't done too many, but I've got my box ready to fill up and continue. So, um, you know, if it's a rainy day and you're feeling uninspired to, to do anything else, then just grab some paints and do some colour swatching. It's just a way of uh, proving to yourself, actually, that you don't need 101 colours. And these sort of exercises do help because they, they familiarise yourself with using colours and it all builds confidence. So it's a good exercise. It looks great in your sketchbook. Uh, you know, I love a messy sketchbook. And, and this sort of thing in here is, is fun for me. These are all texture marks. This is my studio play. Remind yourself that colour mixing can be fun. And it's, it's amazing how many shades you can make with just three primary colours. So why don't you have a go at uh, mixing what you've got, seeing how many colours you can come up with. And uh, let me know in the comments if you've got any other fun ideas as to how to document your swatches, whether it be, you know, using mandalas or more geometric block type uh, arrangements on the page or just going for splodges and just having fun or even just using random abstract marks to make a huge book of, of um, different shades and tones mark making. Have fun. Have fun. Just play. That's the main thing. Have fun and play. Let me know in the comments how you, go, how you got on. Please like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye for now. Have fun.